Well, to discuss some of the recommendations made in the e-commerce policy that uh, the Commerce Ministry has put together, joining us is uh, Prashanto Roy. Prashanto, uh, let me talk about some of the contentious issues, and I'll start by talking to you about what the policy suggests when it comes to domestic data storage. It says to develop capacity for and incentivize domestic data storage in India through the creation of facilitative data infrastructure, making domestic data storage economically attractive by giving data centers infrastructure status and the government should have access to data stored in India for national security and public policy objectives I mean is this does this sound more like a death knell as opposed to facilitation uh, it is absolutely extremely worrying from that context and especially coming from the Ministry of Commerce a panel headed by Suresh Prabhu uh, you know I don't see where they are stepping into what seems to be uh, you know, this whole thing of wanting unfettered access for law enforcement agencies and so on. Uh, plus, you know, the whole idea of this, this uh, panel on e-commerce to develop a national framework and policy was to uh, facilitate, to accelerate, to grow e-commerce from mm. the projected, you know, 80 billion or so that yeah. uh, we are projecting for 2020 to something bigger than that. This is not going to do that. This is going to, if anything, reduce it mm. and cause a lot of concerns for is, is this aimed well specifically at the, the multinationals? Is this aimed specifically at the multinationals or actually, let me be clearer, at the American corporations who are, who are big in India? It is aimed at the multinational corporations, but uh, it is also aimed at, uh, I mean, you know, uh, if it was aimed to be protective of the so-called Indian, uh, large Indian e-commerce players, the fact is they are all funded, uh, the bulk of the funding By the foreign. Chinese or the Japanese, okay, so for yeah. Example, uh, by the Chinese or the Japanese or other uh, VC funds and so on. And for example, Flipkart was very much a major part of the Indian ecosystem. And I think the Flipkart founders were very much into defining, uh, you know, uh, uh, you're talking about a nationalist platform. Now, Flipkart is Walmart owned. So, you know, Flipkart is out of that committee. It was on that committee mm. initially. So I think it is, it is, it's very, very short sighted. And again, this whole nationalism play, mm. which is going to maybe aim at growing. Again, the holy grail is China. You know, China has been able to have. Uh, within a pound a great wall mm. a great firewall develop a very strong national uh, e-commerce ecosystem mm. uh, it is very difficult for India to replicate that because we don't have the same set of circumstances we absolutely do not have the same GDP yeah. now if we try to do that simply by throwing out the foreign players or making life very difficult for them then instead of 80 billion in 2020 you're going to have something like maybe 30 or 40 billion and sure there could be a larger share of that by uh, you know, so-called Indian players who may still mm. be foreign funded, mm. but 49% foreign mm. funding. Uh, the other issue that I want to talk to you about, which I again found interesting, is uh, on the government pushing its own rupee card. Uh, the policy says steps would be taken to build financial intelligence for future innovation using the rupee, uh, enhancing the visibility and adoption of rupee by consumers by mandating its listing as an option for payment in e-commerce transactions. I don't understand why the government want to mandatorily push e-commerce uh, companies to push the rupee card. Yeah, that is, that's worrying and it's also, you know, stepping into an area which is really outside its remit because the Ministry of Commerce's role is not really to uh, be prescriptive, uh, prescriptive about payment instruments and uh, not just this committee but predecessor meetings which have been held by the Ministry of Commerce have actually listed this as an agenda item, those things are a matter of public record, that the rupee card needs to be promoted, etc. Now, to an extent, I understand that, for example, the PMJDY, uh, you know, the Prime Minister's Jantan Yojana bank accounts, which are something like 250 or 300 million, whatever, all of them have rupee cards. So there, there is an interest in promoting the rupee card ecosystem. But they're also looking at, you know, having rupee point of sale terminals across the world and so on, which, you know, this is not really the remit of the the e-commerce panel. Mm. The e-commerce panel has to be looked at. It should be looking at providing a facilitative platform to accelerate e-commerce growth, to address the three or four major hurdles which are there, including yeah. the you know whole the ecosystem, the logistics, the last mile connectivity, a whole lot of other issues which are 
you know, facilitative issues. Then there are fundamental issues in each sector, like in restaurants there are fundamental issues, in you know, other parts there are fundamental right. issues. Uh, the rupee card doesn't fall into the top 20 or 30 problem items hmm. to be addressed. Hmm. I don't see where that comes from. I'll, I'll end then by asking you about your thoughts on the most contentious perhaps uh, recommendation and that is the recommendation when it comes to discounting. The committee saying a sunset clause should define the maximum duration of differential pricing, i.e. a deep discount. Restrictions be imposed on a marketplace or group entities on influencing pricing and the uh, curbs be re on related parties that could lead to price distortions specifically for electronics. Now, consumers uh, are obviously going to bear the brunt of this because they're the ones who enjoy this deep discounting that goes on on e-commerce platforms. So do you believe that it's the brick and mortar chains that have prevailed? Uh, that is that to an extent. Now you've got to go, uh, take a look at what DIPP's press note 3 did a couple of years ago. It actually put in a framework to address this and it said that you know price distortions etc. They should not be price influenced by the aggregator by the platforms. And there were provisions to, of course, they didn't have a lot of teeth to actually be able to take action. So there is, there is an interest in ensuring that small players are not crushed uh, by deep discounting which happens and you know customers are kind of bought and acquired and purchased and then suddenly prices are raised and you need to address that but if the government is going to get too deeply into defining uh, you know pricing yeah. and what controls on pricing should be there that is counterproductive and I think that is going to end up hurting customers and with the whole set of things around it it may simply end up reducing competition in the market and raising prices. All right, Prashanta, we'll have to leave it there. Appreciate you joining us to discuss some of the recommendations made by the Commerce Ministry in that national e-commerce policy draft.